Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, a book on tape, chapter one. Privet Drive. The ominous fog makes the nighttime even more hoary and mysterious than usual here in suburban Britannia. Out from the shadows of God knows what dimension steps the oldest wizard in the books, the near dead Dumbledore. He is clearly a powerful beast and walks with dignity despite his age and attire. He sees a cat that he knows right before he sets to work. He produces a wizard's tool known as the Street Darkener, and with a practiced angling of the arm, begins to siphon away the clarity made for mankind's bulbs. Magical deeds are afoot, dear readers. Magical darkness a must. The atmosphere complete, the cat, now protected by shadows, transforms into who else but Professor Hardcastle McCormick, an old friend and ally of Dumbledore the Half-Dead. She is truly a great wizard also, and possesses many a skill that might aid in tonight's random errands. They speak gravely of tonight's horrible decision. And dear readers, trust me, their work tonight is dubious. What are they to do? Are they really going to go through with tonight's desperate plan? The choice is clearly in powerful hands as Dumbledore ponders with his gigantic brain. Just then, a light approaches in the clouds. Shredding through the stratus descends no other than Hagar the Horrible. A huge man that if you didn't know better, you may mistake him for a giant hairy truck. He is Dumbledore's gopher, and now perched upon his sky leopard, Hagar seems at the end of an errand that has almost bested him. But lo, out from his manly pap, he produces the most powerful baby in the universe. Dumbledore accepts the swaddled child like the delicate button of an atomic bomb. His bowels tense, no false moves here. Hardcastle McCormick pleads with Dumbledore not to go through with the plan. What plan, you ask? Well, they are going to leave this veritable weapon of the gods, this paradox of babiness and power, right here on a freaking muggle's doorstep. But shh, says Dumbledore to the baby. And shh, he says to the lady. As Hagar gnashes his teeth in inner conflict and almost drowns in snotty, fearful tears, his master Dumbledore tells him to wait in the frickin' car if he has to. And the baby is left. The baby with the most telling of scars. The baby that is the seed of power. The baby that is the inheritor of the horrible, hoary hammer of the gods. Harry, the wizard who is destined to vanquish all evil. And if he so wish, bring it back again. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Chapter 2 Harry Potter wakes to the sound of his evil aunt banging on his bedroom's tiny door. His adopted family treats him so poorly, he can barely keep from incinerating them with any number of spells he keeps hidden way up his sleeves. Harry's room is cool, though. He's clearly made the most of it. Unlike his cousin, Roast Beefy, whose birthday happens to be today, the cousin has no idea of the power he is toying with. He is indeed a mean little puke who is borderline retarded and must shout moistly every stupid sentence he manages to piece together. As Harry prepares breakfast, totally magic-free and labor-intensive, 
His vomit-inducing uncle, Giggle Snort, looks on as the evil mother does the blind man birthday dance with roast beefy. The living room turns out to be full of presents for the nonplussed roast beefy weefs. Of course, it is never, never, never enough. Chunks of demands splatter on his parents' faces. Harry must stay calm and repress his urges of igniting the house in a demonstrative fireball, ending the life of these three little pigs. But our wolf remains cool. Today the family is going to the zoo. And on the way, Uncle Pigfat sinisterly suggests a beating to Harry if he sees any kind of magic out of him. Ho ho, dear reader. It looks like Uncle Saltporker has some idea of our hero's magical brain. His face is the worst. The family seems to be happy with nothing. A giant Burmese leopard-eating snake bask in front of their piggish faces like a poem. And of course, they want it to dance for them. But not our Harry. The sweet wizard in remission is psychically linked with the beautiful snake being, having dreamt himself of eating leopards, boars, and dick dicks. And what do you know? Harry can actually speak with this creature. Will his talents ever stop emerging? Harry, with the social grace of a saint, is relating with the orphaned, captive, pig-hating snake. It is a beautiful moment indeed, and Harry for once feels in tune with the natural universe. This snake has no parents, is dangerous, and is beautiful. Harry sees himself here in this snake, like looking at his image in the mirror. It is a perfect moment. But Cousin Roast Beefy Weefs notices some action and runs over to spoil it. Harry totally loses it and frags Roast Beefy Good with a glass be gone spell. Wowoosh! The terrible cousin spills his ass into the cage as the supine beast nobly erects itself out and is thanking Harry as he slithers into the nightmare hearts of all the muggles nearby. Everyone is afraid of this beast but Harry. Of course, Harry, who seems to be part of the natural universe now. And what do you know, dear reader? Providence must have cast a glass be back spell. Cause take a look at the zoo's new acquisition. It is a play. A tragic comedy. The lament of roast beefy, oh weefy. Ha ha ha. The family Porkums is hit palpably with shame. Yes, Harry, do laugh on. Laugh right in their unthinkable faces.